at the end of September 2007, I was invited to the highlands of western Kenya to speak at the African Renewal Leaders Conference. The conference was held in Eldoret, a bustling city of about 200,000 people at an elevation of 7,000 feet. Most of the signs are in English. The downtown area has a number of banks and larger buildings. But though the residents have electricity and clean water, and dress in large part in western clothing, Eldoret seems like a world apart from suburban California where I live. First, few people have cars, so nearly everyone walks to and from work or takes a matatu, a van packed with 9 to 12 people to get around. Matatus are colorful vehicles, some with distinctive paint jobs and each with a name, many with some kind of Christian name. Another factor that distinguishes this area of Kenya are the many, many churches in the area. The larger buildings are from the Reformed Church, the African Inland Church, the Roman Catholics, the Anglicans. But many are small storefront churches that seem to have sprung up everywhere, mostly Pentecostal, part of the African Independent Church movement. Most of these don't have denominational backing to provide training and leadership development. Many pastors have little training at all, but mainly emulate what they hear American evangelists preach on television. Many don't even have a Bible in Swahili, the language spoken by most of the people in the area. We were able to place a Swahili Bible in the hands of nearly 40 of these pastors and leaders, a truly ministry-changing experience for them. It was a group of pastors primarily from the African Independent Church Movement that invited me to speak. In order to make leadership training available to the many poor bivocational pastors in the area, the conference was held in the facilities of the Huruma Church of Christ in Kingongo Estate, a poor suburb about five miles outside of town. Over the four days of the conference, more than 500 pastors and leaders attended, many from this key area. My taxi driver skillfully negotiates the potholes in the muddy, rutted road, using his horn to make a way through the constant stream of walkers along the road. Just down from the church is an orphanage that houses 34 children whose parents have died from HIV AIDS. It is sponsored by the church, pastored by the chairman of the conference organizing committee. Here the children become part of a family. They sleep here, get an education, and learn craft skills. The churchyard always seems to be filled with a dozen children that thoroughly charm me. To get the conference started, the team patches together an amplifier, a couple of speakers, four microphones, and a keyboard. Then the wonderful East African music begins, the slightly overloaded speakers are part of this unique sound. Some of the songs are of Western origin, but most seem to spring from East Africa. A gospel singer will lead out with a line, which is then picked up by the congregation, echoed back and sung again and again, prompted by variations by the gospel singer. Some of the songs are slow, but most have a beat carried by the percussion features of the keyboard. One of my favorites is Simba Wa Yuda, Lion of Judah, who is there to compare with you? There is a wonderful joy and enthusiasm in the music and the worship that is difficult to find in many American churches. As the music progresses, the beat and joy are contagious. After a season of singing and dancing, then it's time for the message. 
During the week, I taught lessons on practical Christianity from the letter of James. But the topical messages God put on my heart centered around how to be the kind of leaders that follow Jesus' example and avoid those things that can prevent us from effective ministry and healthy congregations. We may never be preachers that someone looks to and says, oh, look at that great preacher. And I would have to say, oh, I'm not going to do that. 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 But if we represent Jesus Christ accurately, well done, good and faithful servant. I I spoke about hungering and thirsting for God, leaders as examples to be emulated by the flock, keeping your balance with money, greed versus contentment. God is our source of supply, a call to rely on God for resources rather than an unhealthy dependence on American and European funds. Don't despise the day of small things, an encouragement to small church pastors. Keeping your balance with power, servant leadership versus unhealthy control, pride, and power. Keeping your balance with sex, resisting the temptations of the pastorate. Keeping your balance with love, a call to love for other Christian groups, overlooking the minor differences, and making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For many who traveled from some distance from Rwanda, Uganda, Sudan, and other areas of Kenya, there was a breakfast and dinner served at the church. The noon meal especially was a time when delegates could get to know one another. There was a wonderful fellowship in this diverse East African gathering that I will long cherish. I knew that God had called me to speak at this conference 10,000 miles from my home, but I didn't know why exactly. As the conference developed, I began to see the reasons. The kinship I have with these mainly small church pastors draws on my own career in primarily smaller churches. The ability I have to cross denominational lines draws from the diverse journey God has brought me through, and my age is a plus. I am old enough to be father to all but a few of these pastors and leaders. An evangelist from Uganda said something to me that seemed to bring it all into perspective. Thank you for coming to Africa to father us. Yes, that was it. The week was capped off with a wonderful opportunity to worship on Sunday morning in a church in Longus Estate, a suburb on the other side of Eldoret. Pastor Chris had arranged for some of his friends that rode bicycle taxis to form a procession for us as we neared the church. The service was held at Deliverance Christian Center, where Pastor Philip and his wife led the congregation in this building made of a packed earth floor, wood and mud walls, and a corrugated metal roof. There was lots of wonderful singing. Time didn't seem to be a concern. All the guests from near and far had a chance to be greeted and say a word. The service that began at 10 a.m. went on joyfully until 3 in the afternoon. Afterward, several of the leaders were invited into the pastor's home for a meal. In God's wonderful providence, I was able to share a week with some of God's choice servants a world away. I know that this is just a foretaste of the joy and fellowship we'll experience in heaven at the feet of Jesus. And when I get there, I'll look for the East African section of the heavenly choir and feel right at home.